Hello and welcome. In this video we're going to take a further look at developing sw Swing graphical user interfaces for our applications. In a previous video we developed um, a GUI using Swing but writing the code ourselves from scratch. In this example we're going to take a look at generating that code using NetBeans as NetBeans provides functionality, drag and drop functionality for us to um, add a graphical user interface to our application very easily and NetBeans generates a lot of the code for us. There is one word of caution though. NetBeans does provide the functionality that will generate the swing code for us but we need to remain responsible for good programming practice and we need to be conscious of what each of our objects are being named. All objects will need to be renamed appropriately as NetBeans defaults to names like Label1, TextField1, TextField2, TextField3 and when you've lots of text fields and you want to perform some sort of actions on those it's going to help if you know which one is which. So it, it will be very important later on when it comes to adding event handling code to our application. So as with everything we're going to take a look at an example. The example again we're going to look at is that of the assessment application. Okay, We developed this interface earlier on in another video using um, Swing but writing each of the elements of code from scratch ourselves and this time we're going to take a look at that very same example but using NetBeans and the functionality that it provides to drag and drop each of those components onto our panel. So let's take a look at that. So file, new project, it's a Java application and let's call this one um, NetBeans Swing Example. Okay, browse to make sure that you've saved it wherever it is you want it saved and then let's change the name of our app class to Assessment App. Okay, and finish. Once that's been created for us then we go back to our package, we right click, new and this time we want a JFrame form. Okay, And by telling NetBeans we want a JFrame form it automatically gives us a class that extends JFrame similarly to how we created that ourselves in the previous example. So in this instance it's going to be assessment GUI. Again I'm just labeling it with GUI so that I know at first glance when I look at my files which one's doing which. So, when you add a JFrame form, NetBeans starts to look a little like this. This here is my JFrame, okay, and I can make it bigger or smaller just by dragging it, okay. So I think previously we had 500 by 500, let's see how close we can get to that, okay. So, this is my JFrame, and on the right hand side here you'll see your palette, Okay, which has all of the different components that you can add to the JFrame. All right, if we take another look back at our PowerPoint now, the first thing we wanted to add was a label, okay, a J label that says assessment application on it. So if we find label here under swing controls, we'll drag it out and we can resize it straight away. If we want to change it now, it says J label one in the text, okay. So we can right click and edit text and say assessment application. Now this doesn't change the name of the J label. If we want to change the name of the J label, you'll see down here on the bottom left hand corner, our navigator, we have J label one. If we right click on that and change variable name, we can change it to title LBL, which is what we would have called it in our previous example. Okay, now if I wanted my font to be a little bigger, I come over here, once I've highlighted my label and I've clicked on it, you'll see it's selected. Down here in the bottom right, we have our properties panel. And if I go to font and select this button with the three dots, it will give me the menu and I can increase the font. I can make it bold and okay. And there we go, we have assessment application. There are many other properties, but that's something you'll have to explore yourselves as time goes on. So the next thing we wanted was another label for assessment name, assessment type, and assessment weighting. So let's do those. So label, right click as a text, assessment name, 
and then another label right click and edit text assessment type okay and when I add a label I'm just clicking on it and dragging it over and then dropping it onto the J frame and assessment waiting okay those are my three labels but you'll see here now in my navigator in the bottom left hand corner they've come in as J label 1, J label 2 and J label 3 which is no good to me I need to know which one's which so if I click on assessment name it highlights J label 1 in the navigator I right click and I change variable name to name LBL the next one down then is my assessment type change variable name to type LBL and then the last one is going to be waiting LBL okay the next thing I want then are the input boxes which are my text fields my J text fields so if I go back in here and I have a look for text field I drag that out so that it's opposite assessment name might even move it over a little right click edit text take that text out and I can stretch out my text field then to whatever size I want it to be. At this point then I'll go down to my navigator, right click, change variable name, and this is name TF. I'll do the same then with another text field. Right click, edit text, delete on my keyboard, and just stretch out my text field until it's as long as I want it to be. And then down to my navigator, right click, change variable name, type tf drag in my third and final text field right click edit text delete stretch it out to the size I want it to be and then change the name down in the navigator to waiting tf so you can see if we had left NetBeans to name each of these components it would be very difficult for us to remember later on which one's which and at some point we might want to access a piece of information that's in one box in particular and so it will help to know which box that is we're talking about okay and then finally we have to add a button now there are a few types of buttons here we have toggle buttons we have button groups we have um, radio buttons okay and those are all things that you'll have to explore and try out yourself to see exactly what they do we're just going to add a plain old button here right click edit text and this is going to add assessment okay again let's rename that in the navigator change the variable name add btn okay i'll even resize my jframe a little i have my add assessment button let's maybe change the background of that okay now we select the button we come over to the properties the properties now represent that button okay if we want to change the font we can change to um, times New Roman bold and 18 okay all right and then there's a foreground color which would be the color of our text so let's change that to blue and then similarly if we want the background we go to background click on the button beside that choose your color from the palette so let's say yellow okay now you'll see it hasn't changed the full button yellow but there is a yellow rim around the outside. Don't worry about that because once we play it, actually that yellow is going to appear. Okay, so just be aware of that. If we click back on this now, another useful feature is this idea of an icon. If I had a particular picture that I wanted to appear on the button, I could go here, external image, browse for my image on my computer, and then import to project and OK, and that image would appear on my button okay um, and like I said there are lots of other features there and properties that you can play around with but that's all for you to explore afterwards the next thing we need to do is into our app class and create an instance of our GUI class so assessment GUI my GUI equals new assessment GUI and then my GUI dot set visible true. 
So you can imagine if we want to set a particular J frame to be visible, we use true in the brackets. If we want to make it invisible, we might use false. So that's another thing to remember later on. So if we hit play now, we should get a good look at our user interface. And there it is. And you'll see now the button has in fact gone yellow. Okay. It's just that that doesn't appear in the, the design view of the GUI itself. Okay. Now, at some point while you're developing, you might accidentally click on a button or a text field and it brings you into the code. If you want to go back from the code, you'll see here we have two, three buttons, source, design and history. So you can click on design, we'll bring back to your design view. If you want to go back to your code, you go to source. And you'll see now here in the source, in the constructor, there's a method called init components. And this method calls a method that's down here. So you'll see this generated code label, okay? And if I click on the plus sign there, it expands the code that's been developed for us. So this is all of the objects being created. Here's where the font has been set. If we change the font, setting the background of the button, setting the font of the button, setting the foreground of the button and setting the text. So you'll see all of this code generated in here, okay? And we can collapse that again then just to keep it hidden. We don't need to see it right now. Okay. So that is essentially, well you can see it only took us half the time to create it here in NetBeans, but it is still very important for you to understand what's going on in the background and how the code is written and developed. So it's very important that you watch both this video and the one that came before it to see that code being written. But you can see there's endless possibilities of what you can do and the properties that are available on each of the components allow you to create a good interesting interface. This is a very basic one but there's absolutely limitless ways to create interfaces. Um, so have fun and give it a go.